So how many of you follow the world of startups? It seems so easy to start up a company today, right? All you need is a great idea, a great team, and you're going to get lots of money from people you've never seen before, okay? And you're going to be on your way to success. It's really that easy, or is it? I love robotics, and I love building robots. And I also love entrepreneurship, because there's something very exciting about taking an idea, making it a product, and selling it in the market, and making it useful for somebody. That's really exciting. So, as a robotics entrepreneur, so when I wake up in the morning to news like this, robotic startups don't succeed. It's terrifying. It's horrible. Please don't tweet this, by the way. Don't tweet this. It might say so. Don't tweet it. There are enough articles like this on the internet. And to be very honest, there's a lot of truth to them. In fact, in the past 20 years, there have been hundreds of robotic startups that have appeared, and they've disappeared just as quickly. And some of these startups have come from some of the top robotics research labs with hundreds of millions of dollars of funding, and they have still failed. And so let's think about this for a minute. Why is this? You know, robotics is like a complex technology jigsaw puzzle. A lot of things have to come together to make a good solution. You know, in the laboratory, we can put together motors, sensors, electronics, layer it with artificial intelligence and algorithms, and we can make these robots drive around the world, sense the world, and even act on the world. But when you take that same robot and put it into a business environment, a factory or a warehouse, suddenly your robot is getting asked all sorts of strange questions. Safety, liability, returns on investment, and if your puzzle isn't complete, everything's going to fall apart, and your robotic startup is going down. And it makes robotics a very dangerous idea for a startup. So eight months ago, I decided to quit my job, and I drove 100 kilometers to a city called Kortrijk in the southwest of Belgium, and I created a robotics company there. Some people don't take their own advice, right? <laughs> But I did, and I was terrified. I'll be very honest with you, I was extremely scared, because I didn't have a team. I was all by myself, I was alone. I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but it wasn't perfect. Really, it wasn't perfect. And I was building a prototype of a robot at home, but it was sitting on my desk, and it wasn't going anywhere, it was just sitting there. And it wasn't becoming bigger or smaller, because I didn't have the tools or the machinery to actually make the system a really high-quality product. And I was struggling. Look, I'm not an Elon Musk, neither am I a Steve Jobs, okay? But I'm actually very happy to be standing here eight months later, because I think I'm still alive and <laughs> I'm still surviving. And, and I thought I'd share four lessons that I learned in the past eight months with you. And I hope you can use them in your own startup journey, in your own projects, they don't have to be robotics. I think they can apply to anything. And I hope you find them useful. So let's start with the big idea. We're all talking about ideas all the time. And I know all of us have these big bulbs in our head, these light bulbs, and they keep flashing, right, all the time. And I know all of you guys here have had a great idea, and you've gone running to the internet to see if someone has done it already, right? I know all of you have done it. And you're so disappointed because 99 out of 100 times, someone has done it before you, right? What can we do today? Everything seems to be solved already. There are no more great ideas necessary, right? And I struggled with this question in robotics, because there were two problems. First, everything seems to be solved in robotics. There's nothing to be done anymore. And the other problem was, the people we designed these robots for we never see. They're working in a factory or a warehouse somewhere, in outer space, an astronaut. How do we know what they want? We don't meet them. We don't even work in the same places they do. And I was struggling with this question. So, 
I started visiting a lot of robotics fairs to see what was going on in the market, just to see what people are selling. And I would see things like this. Small robots, big robots. I would even see huge robots that can carry an entire aircraft from one part of the factory to another. And I said, oh my gosh, how am I going to beat these guys? It's impossible. So I was so frustrated last year, and I contacted a friend of mine from the logistics industry. And I said, hey, you know, I'm really struggling to find an idea here. Can you help me out? What is your problems in factories? What do you guys need? And he said, you know, Keshav, when I go to the, to the, to the market to buy a robot, I get very confused because I see all these different robots. Can you simplify it? Is there a way we can make it easier for us to buy robots? And I said, hang on for a few weeks. I'm going to come back. I think I have something for you. And I came back with my first great idea, Keshav's Universal Robots. All you had to do was buy one of Keshav's robots, and it'll drive around and do things for you. And if you needed more work, if it wasn't enough, no problem. Just buy one more of Keshav's robots. And they'll work together perfectly, like friends, like a team. And they'll drive around. You can put a robot arm on one robot and a box on the other robot, and they'll work perfectly. And if you ended up with a huge box, an 800-kilogram box, no problem. Just buy two more of Keshav's robots, and they'll all drive together, lift the box, and happily drive away. Anywhere, anytime. What a brilliant idea. It was so simple and classic and clean. And I was so excited by this idea. I said, man, I'm going to be super rich. I looked up, looked up my address book, and I said, oh, I have three companies in my list, and I'm going to go and validate and test this idea with them. And I was very surprised, you know. These companies actually called me to their factories. And I went and I presented these exact same slides. And they looked at me and they said, Keshav, this is a very interesting idea. It's very advanced. It's very high-tech. It's almost like science fiction. It's amazing. But you're a single guy. Can you build all of this? And what's more difficult for us to understand is we don't have any robots in our factory right now. And you're asking us to use four robots at the same time? I don't think it's going to work. And that was my first lesson. I realized that you might have a great idea, but maybe nobody needs it. Because it might be too complex, it might be too expensive, or it just might be impractical. But you know what was very interesting? That same moment, that same very moment, that same person would look at me and say, but Keshav, hang on a second. Do we really need all of these crazy robots? No, we don't need it. Take one robot, just one. Come with me, I'm going to show you something. And they would take me to a part of the factory where there's somebody moving boxes, you know, from one location to another, putting it here, then moving it here, putting it here. And they would say, look, this guy is one of our most specialized workers. He is supposed to be building high-quality products for our factory, but he's wasting his time moving boxes. Can your robot solve this? Aha! Yes! Eureka! Because you've suddenly discovered a problem that your customer needs. You found it, an aha moment, because that customer doesn't like your crazy idea, but he has a real problem and he knows you can solve it. And when you get this aha moment and you go to these companies with these kind of crazy ideas, you're going to get a lot more. And when you go to these companies, you're going to see a transversal set of industry-wide problems that your company can solve. And that was my second lesson. I learned that the problems that we are trying to solve are right in front of us. But if you ask your customers the right questions, they will give it to you. So, as soon as you get this aha moment, it's absolutely imperative to start prototyping it. And there's two reasons why you have to do that. First, you have to convince yourself that you can build it. And the second thing you have to do is you have to convince your customers that you can actually build that aha moment. 
But prototyping isn't easy, you know, it's horrible. You're going to order the wrong parts. You're going to burn electronics. And you're going to be sitting there back brent like this working. And it's really difficult. But there seems to be a tendency for people to go looking for money from investors just to prototype. I don't think you need to do that. I have another idea. Work for somebody, write some software for a company, build a website for your friends, and make money from there. Sell yourself and use that money to build your prototype. Because it's your money, you'll build the right prototype the first time around. And that was my third lesson. <laughs> you know, all of this reminds me of when I was 12 years old. That's me, by the way. And that was 25 years ago. That was a long time ago. And now you know how old I am. <laughs> you know, when I grew up in India, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have Arduinos. And we didn't have Raspberry Pis like you guys have today, all these young guys have today, right? And at that time, I used to love flying model aircraft. Really simple aircraft, wooden aircraft with a propeller and an elastic band. And I used to find the plans for these from some old magazines that my uncle used to collect from the 1960s. I still have them, by the way. <laughs> and these aircraft would never fly. However hard I tried, they would always fall on their face all the time. And every day I would come back from school excited to fly this aircraft. Because after a lot of twisting and tweaking, twisting and tweaking, one day this plane would just take off in the air. And it would last only for five seconds. But it felt so good. Because something that you've built is actually working. And something else I've learned in the past eight months is to be in the startup business, you need to be very patient and you need to be persistent. That's extremely important. And the best part about this whole thing with the startups, you might have started off without a team, but suddenly you have a number of people who are working around you. And some of these people you've never seen before. You've never worked with them before but they share the same passion for what you're doing. And they want to work with you. They want to make you succeed because they love what you do. And they become your team. And your family too, you know. They become your team because they see you doing all of these crazy things and they want to push you forward. They want to make you succeed too. And that's the beauty of this past eight months. So, I learned these four lessons and we ended up with this guy. He's our first industrial robot. And we're very excited. We're very excited about the future. Because three companies have told us that they like our aha moment. They want to see us doing something with it. And we've built this robot. And we think the future is bright. And I'm extremely proud to share with you today that just yesterday I got a call that we've been accepted into one of Europe's top startup accelerator programs just yesterday. And I think with their support, we can go forward and be successful. So I'd just like to wrap up by saying, if you don't try, you will never know if you're going to succeed or not. <laughs>